Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And in this Science to Practice overview, I'm going to be focusing on probiotics and athletes. So what actually are probiotics and also what are prebiotics? Well, probiotic foods contain non-harmful bacteria that reside in our guts. And they're useful to us because they help to inhibit the growth of other bacteria, which can be pathogenic disease causing bacteria, antigens, toxins, carcinogens, and also reduce their potentially harmful effects. And natural sources um, of probiotics come from certain kinds of foods to include things like milk, yogurt, and cheeses. But the key issue and the key consideration that we need to bear in mind today is that the concentrations of probiotics in these foods is really quite small. So prebiotics are non-digestible foods that help to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. And we also get these from foods. Uh, a wide variety of vegetables help contribute uh, prebiotic effects. But in particular, foods such as raw chicory root, garlic and leek are particularly good examples of prebiotic foods. So what we can take from this is that whilst probiotics are beneficial for us, prebiotics are beneficial for them, which is a win-win team working type process. So that's all very well and good, but are probiotic supplements useful to us? And many studies have been conducted on the use of probiotic supplementation on gastrointestinal problems and upper respiratory tract infections or URTIs in the general population. And a Cochrane systematic review of probiotic benefits for URTI symptoms concluded that probiotics were significantly better than placebo in reducing URTI incidence by around 47% and the average duration of an acute URTI episode by two days, which is promising. But how, how is this actually occurring? Well, there's three main mechanisms. The first one being via innate immunity, and this happens through enhancing phagocytic capacity and improving phagocytic activity. And the second way this can occur is through acquired immunity by significantly increasing specific levels of IgG, IgA, and IgM immunoglobulins. And finally, via local immunity. And this can occur through enhancing gut barrier function and by improving the local immune response, as well as increasing the production of cytokines. Okay, so that's also great. But is this relevant to athletes and athletic? performance. And once again, what we're needing to do here is consider the translational potential of this science into practice. And unfortunately, less is known about the specific benefits of probiotics, specifically in athletes. Now, athletes, of course, are human beings, and therefore the combination of research on general population and the relatively small but significantly useful research on athletes tells us that additional benefits may include less gastrointestinal discomfort symptoms and diarrhea during prolonged exercise, reduced risk of endotoxemia during exercise in the heat, reduced incidence of gastrointestinal infections, uh, which is a particular concern, of course, with traveling athletes. But the thing that we need to bear in mind here is that there are mixed results and therefore more research must be done in order to confirm any added benefits beyond those seen in the general population. Okay, so we can see that there is a relatively strong potential benefit in taking probiotics in specific situations. So how do we actually supplement with these probiotics? And the very first question you're going to need to ask yourself or consider with your, your clients, your athletes, is do they actually need to take these? And this is a, a decision-making process that you would need to take um, with all kinds of, of supplements and strategies that you're going to implement into practice. And we have and will have a series of science to practice overview videos 
on decision making uh, uh, type matrix uh, considerations and other related uh, videos for you uh, to help you with this. So now we're going to consider taking probiotics, but because the research shows us that it's a dose dependent response, we need to carefully consider the correct dose. And therefore, the research tells us that an effective daily dose in athletes that has been trialed is 10 billion colony forming units of these bacteria. And you may have seen that there are functional food supplements, um, some commercially available probiotic drinks, some of which may or may not have the appropriate levels or types of these bacteria. So you still need to choose carefully and read the labels and cross-reference that with the research to make sure that you're taking an evidence-based approach to your supplementation. If you're not going to take these functional food products rich in probiotics, then you will be looking to take uh, supplements, of course, and therefore it's important that you find a batch-tested brand with the appropriate dose of the probiotics and, of course, the appropriate strains, as already mentioned. If you're an elite athlete or professional athlete, you will also not want to forget that they should be tested by the appropriate lab, uh, in this case, informed sport being one of the best examples. So what is the take home messages from the evidence on this topic? Well, firstly, probiotics can improve gut health and reduce URTA, URTI risks and symptoms in general population and possibly also in athletes. And some, ev some evidence supports added benefits for athletes, but more work is needed to confirm this. Dairy products such as probiotic drinks are referred to and the batch tested probiotic supplements that must contain the appropriate dose, which is 10 billion colony forming units of bacteria appears to be necessary to see the benefits we've been discussing. And of course, you should be testing the product with your athletes to establish tolerance is actually possible because you don't want to have any nasty surprises. Um, so always do this outside of competition. This is a very deep and complex topic, so I strongly recommend that you read our position stand paper on probiotics. It's open access, easily available, and all you have to do is Google International Society of Sports Nutrition Position Stand Probiotics, and you will have lots of good reading on this topic uh, to look forward to. I also recommend a number of podcasts that I've done. Um, firstly here, episode 63 on probiotics and athletes with Professor David Pine, where we specifically talk about um, all of this. I also recommend a podcast I did with Professor Michael Gleason, episode 69 on the immunological aspects of training and sports nutrition, where uh, we spend a significant proportion of that podcast on probiotics and gut health and function. And there are actually uh, several other podcasts um, shortly to be published, one on probiotics based on the position stand I've just referenced, and also one on the microbiome, which is a, a, another uh, relevant topic to get into. So to access those podcasts um, and also our other outputs, please do check out our website at www.theiopn.com where you can also learn about our uh, advanced training and education programs for current and aspiring sport and exercise nutritionists, and in particular, our 100% online diploma in performance nutrition, where you can become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition. So thank you for listening. There you have it. Um, do come to our website as a reminder it's www.theiopn.com and also check out our social media channels which is at the IOPN. I'm Dr. Ron Bannock, look forward to bringing another episode back to you very soon.